I'm so excited about my new book. It's a book of poetry and it's titled My Soul Feels Lean, Poems of Loss and Restoration. And I thought I'd just say a little something about the book first of all. When I was gathering these poems that I've written over many years and I edited them, I began seeing that they kind of fell into two areas. One was poems about loss and grief and limitations and aging. And the other was, were very much about nature and hope and life and birth and all that. So it just seemed to me like it was that whole balance of life that we experience, you know, loss and then coming through that to new growth and then experiencing something difficult again. So I'm going to begin, uh, and what I did in the book is um, I have an essay at the beginning of loss and I have an essay at the beginning of restoration. So I thought I'd read two paragraphs from the essay on loss because it really kind of summarizes the uh, focus of the poems. My soul was free and lean when I arrived at birth, having none of the encumbrances that quickly collected as I began to grow and develop. I soon learned, however, to hang on tightly to who and what I deemed to be of value. Wishes and wants gradually dominated my inner landscape. As much as I've tried to keep what I collected through these desires, life events continually divest me of some part of what I gain and hold on to tightly. Now in my later years of life, I look at this process of loss and relinquishment, and I see its worth for my personal transformation. As I let go of what I hoped would be permanent, layer after layer of attachment is removed. My soul grows leaner, and the view of who I truly am becomes clearer. I slowly regain that early freedom that my soul had at birth an ability to live more fully from my core of goodness. Now I can breathe love expansively and hold more lightly what I consider to be of great value. So when I was, I put the poems together and then I sent them out to three or four readers. And it was interesting because I heard from one of the readers and he said to me, you know, the title of your book is My Soul Feels Lean. I'd like you to have a, a poem about my soul. What does soul mean to you? And I thought, I can't just sit down and write instantly about soul. But I thought about it quite a while and I actually did come up with something. So this is the poem that starts the book and it's titled, My Soul. He asked me to write a poem about my soul. My soul. I wondered how I could do that without ample inspiration with only the mundane motive of presenting my soul. I could tell of knowing my soul's songs, but that's not the same thing as writing about my soul, or is it? I have felt my soul's surge of love time and again, intuitively, coming forth like a deep wave of the sea washing through my wanting self, rising in the taste of solitary joy, sitting on the tongue of nature's beauty, laughing in the ear of my listening heart. But how do I write about this ephemeral glimpse of goodness that passes like a firefly through a summer's night? How do I put into words what I know of this essence, my being, this eternal foundation of all that is strong, true, and worthy? I believe in soul, trust soul, follow soul's movements, and love soul with all my being. Maybe someday, words will show their face as my soul does, unexpectedly, lovingly. But for now, I'll simply be with my soul. So one of the poems in here that I've chosen on loss um, is one that I think speaks a lot to diminishment and it's called The Old Cottonwood. The old cottonwood has long ago shed his bark, pale skin of the thick trunk, aged flesh grown translucent in all, is all that remains. With only a few sparse branches left to keep him company, he bends over the forest floor, almost horizontal in posture, bowing to the azure sky. I expect with each strong wind to find him lying flat on his stomach. But no, 
His journey to death is a slow diminishment. Not unlike the bodies I see, still alive with unhurried death in the Pleasant Valley nursing home. The strong roots of their years holding them too in this world, as deeply as the old cottonwood veering toward annihilation. And then I have a number of poems in here around grief, uh, my own grief, but also other people that I've known and have been with. And so I'm going to read this particular one. is titled, Grief Has Come to My House. Grief has come to my house, entered without invitation, banged on my locked door, slashed the tightly fitted screens, smashed in the durable windows. She sits now in my heart's best chair, staring at me with bleeding eyes, cobwebs of sorrow in her hair, clumps of sadness on her sour breath. Grief, my unwelcome visitor, demands constant attention, cleans out my well-stocked pantry, gobbles up my daily energy, and refuses to give me any sign of imminent departure. I have unlocked the door now, but she never goes near it. In spite of listening to her endless pain and brushing away her constant tears, she still clings insistently to me, refusing to walk out of my life. What more does she expect? Surely not my friendship. And so uh, I'm going to move to restoration, which is about hope and new growth. Uh, I'm going to read the first poem that starts this section, which is, I Hear Spring Breathing. I hear spring breathing softly her quiet respiration rising and falling through the heavy snowbanks, gurgling in the sunshine. I hear the slow, steady intake of mid-February air stirring the awakening crocus. I hear the sigh of the oak tree's terminal buds, warm wind stretching them out beneath the turquoise sky. I hear my own lungs inhaling and exhaling with renewed hope ready for the coming of green and the shedding of all that is grayed with winter's feigned death. This next one I'm going to share, I actually wrote when I was in New Zealand. I was working there and I was on the South Island and one morning I had the wonderful opportunity of getting up early and walking in that beautiful rainforest. It was kind of misty that morning and as I started walking, I was really actually first kind of alarmed because I saw so many big, beautiful native trees that had fallen down and, and were obviously dead. And then I noticed something very surprising as I kept walking, and that's what this poem is about. New Zealand Rainforest Surrendered, surrendered nobility rest quietly on the leafy woodland floor. Giant trunks of ancient trees have plummeted from their secure height to the graveyard of decay, giving themselves to the summons of death without seeming reluctance. Somewhere in their limbs they carry the secret that death never has the last word. I see on their decaying bodies tender moss, sturdy lichen, emerald fern, and other rich inhabitants honoring their way into life gestated and nourished by the fallen limbs. I walk within the corridors of this early morning, sensing kinship with earth's eastering, finding hope, hearing its quiet song, feeling a steady rhythm of life beating among the dead, here in the New Zealand rainforest. This last one I'm going to read is uh, one of my favorites in this part of the book. My inspiration for this poem came, I got a note from uh, Dorothy D, and it was about her good friend Honor Kierens who had died, and in the note she wrote, every day I ask Honor to give me the best of her. And after I read that note, I came across a quote by Eddie Hillesum, that wonderful young Jewish woman who died at Auschwitz. And Eddie had written, 
I shall live on with that part of the dead that lives forever, and I shall rekindle into life that of the living that is now dead, until there is nothing but life, one great life, O God. And so this is my poem, The Best of You. You are gone from me now, years of grief grown paler, but still glowing steady with memory drawing me ever toward you. I want the best of you, who you were in your finest clothes, generous, forgiving, full of purest love. Every day I ask of you to grant just this much to me, the best of you, a wardrobe of goodness wrapped in easy laughter, an adventurous heart, a searching soul. How could I not yearn daily for what held us close, the best of you?